Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how I make my retro VHS style video effects in Adobe Photoshop and how you can go um, and make something like this while starting with something like this. And um, the whole process is pretty simple and all of the um, images that I've used I'll link in the description below so you can follow along. Uh, the great thing about this is once you get to know these basics you can really experiment with them and go crazy and apply them to all kinds of different images and, and different things like that. So, to begin, you just want to make a new document at an A3 size, that's what I've made here. Um, I find that's like a nice big poster size, but you can really make it at, at any size you want. Um, now, the first three steps here have been taken from another YouTube video, uh, a really great tutorial that I found was a super good resource when getting started. So the first three steps are there, but then the rest after that are mine. So, once you've made your A3 document, You'll drag your image in. Like I said, this image will be linked in the description if you wanted to use this exact one, but it should work on any kind of image you have. Once you have your image in place, you want to right click and make sure that it's converted to a smart object. Uh, what this means is that all the effects we're applying to it will be um, non-permanent and non-damaging. So if we ever want to go back and change those effects or edit them in any way, it'll, we'll be able to do that really easily. So once we've made sure it's a smart object, you want to duplicate it with Ctrl J. So we have two copies on our. Let me get rid of this one. On our topmost copy, we're going to go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. We want to set the angle to minus ten and the distance to five. And what that's going to do is it's going to smooth out the whole image. If we look at close, if we take the blur off, you see there's a lot more noise and grain around the image. If we have the blur on it, kind of just smooths everything out. Our next step, while still being on this top layer, is to go to Filter, Stylize, and, sorry, Filter, Sharpen, and Smart Sharpen. Uh, the amount is 55, the radius is 64, and Reduce Noise is set to 10. Just click OK. Uh, now this might take a little while. Yeah, I got an old computer and it's a big filter, I guess. But the purpose of the Smart Sharpen and the next filter we'll be putting on, the purposes of those are to really simulate the kind of hard, harsh quality that you get on a lot of home videos from the 80s. Um, an almost kind of ugly look and very flattened look. That's what we're going for with the Smart Sharpen and our next filter. Um, these are really great tools for simulating that kind of, uh, that kind of home video look. Once it decides to finish applying, there we go. So now if we look closer, you can definitely see an immediate change. All the blacks are darker and every kind of part of the image is, is um, a little sharper. If we turn the filter off, you can definitely see it, especially around the eye, because kind of soft the whole image is to begin with and then with the filter on really harshes everything up, which is perfect for what we want to be doing for this video effect. So next we go to filter, stylize, and emboss. We're going to set the angle to 165, the height to 2, and 356 for the amount. And obviously right now this is going to look pretty indecipherable. We want What we want to do is adjust the blending mode. We'll switch it to hard light and we get this great kind of video style quality on top of the image. Now one thing that I like about this, um, so one thing that I don't like about this is that it's a little too sharp for me. I realized that was the whole point of applying the sharpen filter earlier, but still this is a little too sharp. So we're gonna go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. We'll put it to just about one pixel. That just smooths it out a little bit. Um, and we'll go back to our, just turn off this layer for a moment, go back to our original one, and we're gonna go to filter, noise, add a noise. Let's go 20 at uniform. And what this does is that it applies some of the noise back that we took out through our motion blurring earlier. We go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let's do one pixel again just to smooth out a little bit of that noise. So it's looking pretty good so far. Now the next step is to apply the kind of scan lines, the kind of horizontal lines that you see in a lot of old TVs. It's a really simple process. So we want to go control N and we'll create a new document. And you want to make it one pixel wide by two pixels high at a resolution of 300 and RGB color. Click create. 
Now obviously this is going to be a tiny image, so we're going to press Control Zero to make it fill the canvas. And create a new layer, grab our marquee tool, and you want to draw the marquee over half of the image. Now the image is going to the marquee is going to want to snap to either full or half, so it's pretty simple. Make sure you got half and fill this half with a black, just like that. Then you want to go to Edit, um, Define Pattern, and you want to call it something like Scan Lines. And then you can close this, we don't need it anymore. Back in our original image, you want to create a new layer, and you want to go to your Marquee tool, draw out a very small rectangle, something like that. You go to Edit, Fill, uh, Pattern, and then choose the pattern we just created our scan lines. You see I um I've got a few earlier from when I was practicing. Click OK. And then what we want to do is stretch this little box that we just made so it fills the whole canvas. And now we have these great horizontal scan lines like you see on an old TV. Let's mess around with our blending modes a little. Usually I stick to overlay or soft light for these. Um quite liking the the overlay. So do that, and our next step is to press Ctrl J to duplicate those scan lines, Ctrl T to rotate them, and we're going to rotate them 90 degrees, and then stretch them out just so they fill the canvas. And now instead of just the horizontal scan lines, we have these vertical scan lines, and where they intersect, we get this great dot pattern, which I found is really is a really good um, is a really good look. So we're going to highlight both of our scan lines and we'll group them together. And you want to lower the opacity just a little until we find something that we're kind of happy with. I find you probably don't want to go over, over 50% because we still want the image below to be visible and we don't want the scan lines to be overpowering. So well, this is somewhere around 30% or so. Yeah, I like that. Let's create a new layer. And our next steps are to create the kind of static video effect you see on, on an old video. Uh, I've provided a link to these textures in the description below. I just grabbed them from Unsplash. What we want to do is drag our new textures on top. And we're going to work one at a time with these. So we'll work with our large blue one first. Just center it and we'll just stretch it out so it fills the canvas. And we want to create a new adjustment layer just down here. And you want to click uh, black and white. And then you want to hold down Alt, hover between the layers until we get this little arrow, and then click. And what it does is it clips the black and white to the um, static layer. So the black and white is only affecting that and nothing else on the image. Now we have that in place, let's go back to our static. And we want to mess around with our blending modes until we find something that we like. Um, I kind of like Color Dodge, this is one I've been working with recently. So let's stick with Color Dodge. And like our scan lines before it, it's a little overpowering right now, so we're just going to mess with the opacity just a little until we get just some of that coming through. So again, around 30% here looks quite nice. And then we'll turn back on our other texture layer. This is legit, uh, like legit TV static, so it should look really great here. But again, let's stretch it out so it fills the canvas. A little more. And then let's mess around with those blending modes again. A lot of this um, project is kind of trial and error and kind of just messing around until we see something that we kind of like. And let's go with, let's go with Lighten. And let's mess with that opacity again. Let's drop it down quite a bit. So around 20% or so, that's like 16%. We're starting to see some really nice kind of uh, places where all the effects are blending together where the stylization and the scan lines and the static are kind of blending. It's looking really nice. But one thing to know is that as we added these stylization effects and then the scan lines and then the static, it's kind of washed out the whole image and made the whole thing a little more gray than I'd like. Let's go down and add a new adjustment layer and let's add a hue saturation. Let's bump the lightness up just a little and let's bump the saturation up as well to bring some color back to the image. And also I find on a lot of old videos, their color balance is sometimes a little off. So we have um, a little more saturation than normal, which I think looks pretty good here. So I get around 30%, this is good. So 
let's create a new layer and let's go alt control shift and e and hold down those together and what that does is it creates a merged copy of everything on the layers below it so what that means is we have all of our original layers here but we have a new layer with all of our merged effects on it so we're going to work on this one for now let's right click convert it to a smart object and then we want to go to filter distort and shear um, and what this will do is create the kind of um, shifting kind of ghosting effect that you can see in a lot of old TVs where it's a little bit distorted so we just want to drag out a couple of dots on this line so we can adjust our image you can see here it's starting to warp a little now if we go too far to the side I think that's a little too much I try and stay closer to the middle and um, just create a kind of a uh, little a little of distortion something like this let's click OK and here we go it's looking good but again this is this is too much let's lower that past it let's drop it way down a lot of the effects we do from this point onwards are going to be probably at an opacity of less than 20% just to um just to be like kind of a subtle effect but you can see here here and look around the eye you can see there's this ghosting effect where we have the the uh, distorted sheared layer on top which is then good let's uh, create a new blank layer again alt control shift and e to create a new layer and now we don't need this one to be a smart object because it's only gonna um, be in use for just a second I'm gonna grab our Mackie tool I'm gonna drag out a small thin rectangle anywhere on the image you like um, I find the eye is quite nice here but again it depends on what image you're using below and um, once we have that marquee drawn out I'm gonna press ctrl J duplicate it and you see here we've just got a layer that's just a thin strip of um, the image let's delete the layer below it and with our thin strip of the image I'm gonna press ctrl T to transform it and what I'm gonna do here is drag it down vertically um, and let's drop that past you way down but what this is doing is create a kind of um, creating a kind of distortion again like I was sheared here this is the kind of thing you see on all TVs where the tracking is a little off and the image is kind of jumping around so let's drop that down I think this looks really nice around the eye and uh, let's create a new layer and our next step is to drag in another texture this is one that I grabbed from texture fabric again it's in the description below we'll put that on top and this texture is um you'll see it once we make it a little bigger this texture is like dust and hair and grime and kind of all kinds of things like that. There's little bits of thread. I find what this is great at is simulating when you have kind of a buildup of dust behind the screen on an old TV. So let's mess around with Benny mode. Let's go to let's go to the lighten for the moment. Now if we zoom in close, you're going to be able to see a couple of the effects. You see here these like kind of white. Uh, Max, but uh, it's looking a little subtle at the moment. So I'm going to do is press Control L to access the levels, and grab this rightmost marker and drag that towards the center. And what that's going to do is make all the whites a lot brighter on the image, so the whole thing is going to be a lot more visible. And again, if this is looking a little too much for you, you can grab the leftmost marker, kind of mess around with it. That makes the blacks blacker, so only the brightest whites coming through here. And you just kind of want to mess around with these until you get something that you like. It's looking pretty good to me. Let's again grab the opacity and kind of drop it down a little. Um, it's looking pretty good. Now we want to duplicate that image. Control J. And then you want to press Control I until we've got it like this. You want to change your home lighten to darken. And grab those levels and again let's mess around with the levels and what we're trying to do here is instead of having the lightest parts visible we want only the darkest parts visible actually this isn't this isn't <laughs> that's not quite working let's let me start again grab the plane texture again drag it on top center it 
Control T, transform it to fill, and let's rotate it 180 degrees, just so uh, the black max here and in the exact same spots that the white max are in on the other image. So we go to Control, uh, sorry, we change our blending mode to darken, and we'll press Control I to invert it, and again Control L, grab the leftmost marker this time. If we drag it towards the middle, you can see there's a lot more black spots are showing through. This is kind of um, another way to simulate the kind of dirt and, and build up behind the back of an old TV, or kind of distortion and dirt on the tape itself. Um, and again, it's all about messing around with these marks until we get something that we like. Something like that's quite nice. Let's drop that opacity down a bit, just so it's not quite so visible. This is looking pretty good. Let's create a new layer. Alt, Control, Shift, and E. To make another merged copy, right click and click Convert to Smart Object. Um, these merged copies have been like the most, uh, most important thing that I've discovered the working this year. Um, kind of really fantastic. Uh, and we'll go to Filter, Lens Correction. We want to go to Custom, and then we want to go to Remove Distortion here. Let's drop it down to say minus two. And what this is going to do is it's going to simulate the kind of fishbowl effect that you get in a lot of old, big, curved TVs. Again, if we pushed it all the way to the left, we end up with a very concave image, which is what we don't want. And all the way to the right is a very convex image. Um, but let's let's go around minus two for now, which gives it a slight kind of bulbous look, which is what we want. Um, down here on vignette, let's change the amount. We'll push that to the right. And this is going to create a light vignette around the sides. Again, at the midpoint, push that to the right, create a light vignette around the sides. And this is kind of simulating the glow on a lot of old TVs. Just click OK once you've got something that you like. And again, the effect is kind of immediate. This is it without. And this is it with the kind of bulging effect. Um, let's create a, another adjustment layer. I'm going to go to Hue Saturation again. And I want to restore a little bit of the color to the image. Again, all the effects we've been applying have kind of washed out just a little since our last saturation. So we'll bump that up just a bit. And um, that's looking good to me. This final step is create a new layer. You want to grab your paint bucket tool and hold hold it down until you get the gradient. And then earlier, I just created a rainbow gradient. It's pretty easy. You just click and, and choose the color you want. Uh, so I created a rainbow one earlier. Uh, and this is going to, again, simulate the kind of effects that you might see on an old TV, where kind of the... I don't know what's happening there. Where there's this kind of a rainbow glow. Let me, let me create a new gradient, I'm not sure what I did there. Yeah, this creates the kind of rainbow glow you see in a lot of old CRT TVs. So on a new blank layer, I wanna drag out a horizontal gradient, something like this, and let's mess around with it until we get something we like. Let's go with, uh, let's go with the multiple. In fact, let's go with lighter. But let's drag that opacity kind of way down, talking in the single figures here. Again, a lot of these effects, the last few we've been doing, have been pretty subtle, but I think they all add up um, to create something really strong when they're kind of piled up together. Uh, well, so I've got it set to multiply here at 12%, and I kind of like, if you look here on the left side of the image, the gradient's pretty apparent. This is something I like. Okay, and I think... That is everything for now. Again, once you know the basics, it's really great to go back and kind of experiment with a few different things. Here's a uh, one I've made before, and um, just using text this time. Uh, and you find the text looks really great. We have this kind of distortion and shear effect we did. And um, to do the text, all you have to do is make sure that the text is the very first thing you do, um, and then make a merged copy on top of that, and then just go ahead from, from the beginning. Um, we also have this one, which makes which uh, takes really great advantage of the kind of vertical, when I drew that vertical marquee and dragged it down, I feel like this looks really great here. 
Um, and here's another kind of more horror focused one where I leaned into making the whole image a lot, a lot harsher and um, kind of played with the colors a little more. I really like vertical dragging here. These teeth look fantastic with that. But yeah, this is everything that we've done today. So we've managed to go from our original, kind of very, uh, very modern, very clean image here to create our restarted kind of video effect here. Um, all in about 20 minutes or so, so not, not too bad at all. If you have any questions uh, about this tutorial, you can leave it in the description. But also if you make anything using this, if you find it useful, feel free to tag me on Instagram or Twitter or any place. I'm, I'm always really keen to see if people make use of these videos. Um, and if there's anything you want to see, any kind of tutorials you want to see me make, um, I'd love to, I'd love to hear about them. You know, I'm, I'm never sure what information I can give to help people, but if you know anything you'd want to see, I'd love to, I'd love to try and help with that. But yeah, this is everything we've done today. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, um, you can check out some of my other tutorials. I have one on making retro sci-fi graphics. It's a little old now, but it uses some of the same kind of effects that we used here. But yeah, um, I hope everybody had a good day and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.